Hi, everyone. Welcome to reInvent 2020. My name is Bill Vass. Our team runs about 42 different services at AWS that range from IoT and edge devices to autonomous systems and robotics, even rendering and gaming, along with real-time streaming, along with management, governments, and storage. Uh, there's a lot in our portfolio that covers the edge, and we'll be talking about today. I've been working in information technology since 1980, and I've worked in the oil and gas industry and the defense. I was the CIO for the Pentagon for a lot of the uh, field deployed units and things like that. So I'm very familiar with the edge and what's involved in pushing the cloud out to the edge. And that's what we're going to talk about today is pushing the cloud out to the edge. At the end of the presentation, there'll be a whole bunch of other resources you can link to to get more detail in this portfolio. You know, Dirk did a wonderful job on his IoT presentation, and I highly encourage you to take a look at that as well. So let's get started. So what is the edge? So the edge is really, it's probably where you are right now, unless you're sitting in an AWS availability zone. Uh, it, the edge is all around us. It's your iPhone, it's your Android phone, it's your iRobot vacuum cleaner there, it's your car. We just announced a partnership with QNX and QNX runs in 10 out of the 10 major manufacturers out there that allow you to run IoT and green grass in your car. But also for a lot of these autonomous vehicles, things like RoboMaker and Snowballs and other things like that are used at the edge. In addition to that, the edge is industrial sites, hospitals, field deployed units, oil rigs, ships, all sorts of things happen at the edge. And more and more things are happening at the edge, more and more computes happening at the edge. And so it's really important to have a consistent development environment uh, between the cloud and the edge so you can still take advantage of the resiliency and scalability of the cloud. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So when you're dealing with the edge, you kind of deal with what we call the three laws, the laws of physics. Uh, we can't move faster than the speed of light, at least not yet. And so latency is a big deal for the edge for some applications, especially real-time robotics or manufacturing and things like that. Uh, the law of economics, although you may operate a drone that's collecting a lot of data at the edge or a seismic vessel or something like that, you could get enough transponders perhaps on satellites to send it back, but it'd be really expensive to do that. Uh, so when they're filming movies, for example, on snowballs at the edge and things like that, uh, they're doing those high resolution things at the edge and not sending them back over the network because it's too expensive. And the law of the land. Sometimes there's data residency requirements where things need to stay at the edge or in country. It really just depends. So AWS, we've been working on and continuing over the last number of years to build sort of the best platform for operating at the edge. The goal here is to give a centralized control and decentralized execution so that you can have the same environment to develop, connect, deploy, manage, secure with all the same tools and then. So for example, you can build a container or a Lambda and run it at each of these stages we'll talk about here on the edge. Uh, you can deploy machine learning models, you can do patching, you can do updating, you can do deploying all consistently across it. So uh, you have reduced latency, you can take advantage of at the edge, you can access a lot of cloud services at the edge, and they're all nicely connected into the cloud, even in disconnected and reconnecting environments. Uh, and you can lower cost of development by having a single programming model across all of your environment from the edge to the cloud. So let's take a look at what this architecture looks like. At the, the very ragged edge, I like to call it, you have microcontrollers and devices and things like that. Uh, you have sites which are networked together. The telco with the new 5G hubs rolling out become an important edge site for us for the ability to deploy high performance gaming applications, and robotics and other things in those sites. We'll talk a little bit about a uh, wavelength there. The rugged edge, uh, which is where we're running our ruggedized devices, and a lot happens happens in those locations. On-premise is the edge for a lot of people inside their data centers or our field offices and things like that. Metro centers, that's another edge location for us. That's where we extend an availability zone locally, right, for example, in the LA area for handling the movie industry and, and things going on there. And then, of course, our regions that are globally distributed. So if we take a look at the architecture, we're going to dive into each of these segments, starting with what's under microcontrollers. 
So under microcontrollers, we've got all of your devices out there and all of your devices that don't run an operating system and do run an operating system. And those are covered with free RTOS and Greengrass. Uh, you've got IoT Core to connect and manage them all and SageMaker Neo to handle the machine learning models you want to push out to the edge. So let's talk a little bit about free RTOS. It's the number one microcontroller operating system out there. It's open source. It provides local connectivity. It connects into the cloud so you can connect across devices and into the cloud. Security and security management, that's probably one of the most important things to remember about AWS across the board. We have the highest level of security of any cloud provider out there today, and we focus heavily on security. And it's really important in edge environments that you handle that security very carefully. And that's why we have code siding for our over there updates. So free RTOS is really important to us. But a lot of our customers who use these on billions of devices came to us and said, hey, you know, we really need a long-term support for this that's more stable and, and that you provide a continuous support for. Uh, so we are releasing that. So long-term support available over there, updates, security patches, and feature stability for two years at a time. And that's pretty important for our customers. As you move up to more sophisticated devices, things that can run operating systems, we have IoT Greengrass. So Greengrass gives you the ability to do secrets management, so you can handle, for example, managing the secrets and the search for secure communication and other things on the device. You can do local messaging uh, within Greengrass and uh, between Greengrass devices. Uh, you can take local actions. Uh, you can run Lambda functions locally and things like that. Remember I said you can run Lambda everywhere. You can run containers. We have container support everywhere. Stream Manager, one of my favorite things in there, it reduces the complexity of doing your communication. You've got local streams for like Kinesis and things like like that, but it can find the different radios and you can choose between connected and radios which type of communication you want to use and all the complexity of communication is just done for you. And then, of course, we provide an ML interface so that you can run your machine learning models locally and filter the data as needed or you react to it as needed. But, you know, a lot of our customers use Greengrass and we got a lot of feedback for them. And so with that, we built out Greengrass uh, version 2, which is a complete rewrite of Greengrass, sort of end-to-end, -end, but still backwardly compatible, uh, which is nice. Our customers can just update directly. One piece of feedback we got is that Greengrass's footprint was too large. So now it's modular. So you can add or subtract things that you need, uh, depending upon the size of the device you have. And even if you add everything, the footprint is much smaller. The performance is massively better. Uh, so giant improvement there. It's a JVM based system. So it runs on more platforms. You can also deploy and scale locally, which is pretty neat. And you have local configuration and local control as well. And a lot of our customers said to us, hey, I want to embed this in my devices just like FreeRTOS. I need it to be open source. My security team needs it to be open source. I need it to, I want to contribute to it myself. And so announcing now at reInvent that we are open sourcing Greengrass as well. So I uh, look forward to a lot of innovation on top of Greengrass there. And then, of course, you got to connect everything with IoT Core. So IoT Core lets you control the identity of the devices, you register the devices, have a gateway to devices, do message brokering. You can have rules engines. So as things connect and disconnect or our data comes in and out, you can take actions on it based on that, especially at the large volume of data that, that's getting produced today. Uh, we connect you know, hundreds of millions of devices that we manage with Core, and they, they're handling billions of transactions today. One of my favorite features is device shadowing. A lot of people don't understand that, but uh, in the IoT world and at the edge, things are connecting and disconnecting all the time. And so uh, when it's disconnected, the shadow of it, its last state shows up in IoT Core, and you can see what its last state is as if it was an active device, and you can interact with that last state, like patch it or update it and things like that. And when it reconnects, it resyncs up. So shadowing is a pretty important piece of IoT Core. Okay, let's talk about Siemens, one of our partner customers. Siemens has the MindSphere product, which is connected with our industrial AWS IoT systems. This allows you to securely onboard assets across a huge number of sites. And Siemens is one of the top players in the industrial IoT space. So we're pretty excited about partnering up with them and working on customers, for example, like Volkswagen together, which we'll talk about later. But our goal here is to connect up to 80% of the worldwide industrial automation and edge devices out there. 
and manage high levels of availability and follow along with the core SLAs that are needed for those sites. So look for more from us and Siemens in the future, along with a whole bunch of other of our partners in this space. So let's talk about machine learning at the edge. Uh, so some time ago, we launched SageMaker Neo, which lets you if you're an expert in machine learning or you, you know machine learning well, you can use a huge number of models and you can build your own machine learning model and push it out to the edge. And that's one of the things that uh, NEO allows you to do. But a lot of our customers said, well, what they want to really be able to do is manage those models at the edge and have the models interact with each other and have cascading models and those kinds of things. So uh, you can have multiple models now on, on your devices with the uh, SageMaker Edge Manager. So that includes the quality of what you've got running out on the edge. And why are people use machine learning on the edge? They use it to turn cameras into IoT devices, which we'll talk a little bit about. They use it for filtering data. They use it for anomaly detection, and they use it for local alarms as well. So ML is a really important piece at the edge. So one of the areas that a lot of our customers said to us is said, wow, you know, we really need uh, uh, to do anomaly detection and do proactive maintenance using machine learning at the edge. Uh, uh, but we also need it back in the cloud for things we're streaming in directly. And we don't have the machine learning expertise to do this. Could you pre-build machine learning models uh, around things like turbines and motors and pumps and others uh, that run in our factory floors, uh, in our manufacturing centers and things like that, so that we can do predictive maintenance. So we're launching Lookout for Equipment. So your data streams back through IoT Core and back on the cloud, we're running these machine learning models that are pre-configured for you to let you know about proactive maintenance so you could save money on maintenance and react locally to that data that's streaming up to the cloud. But a lot of customers said to us, hey, you know, we need a simple way to deploy machine learning and sensors uh, on site where we can react to it locally, uh, even if it's disconnected from the cloud for periods of time, or I have uh, not enough bandwidth to send all of my data up there. So announcing Amazon Monitron, which gives you an easy, automatically updated ML tool and a bunch of sensors that automatically connect to it. It's pretty neat. You drop it on site, you plug it in, you turn it on, it binds to those sensors and those sensors immediately start looking for anomalies on your equipment, primarily using temperature and vibration on these sensors. They're very inexpensive sensors and it's a pretty cool product to do more at the edge. So you can stream it to the cloud and do it in the cloud or you can do it right here at the edge. And a great example is another one of our partner customers is Fender, who makes amazing musical instruments. And it's great to make music together with Amazon Monotron and reduce their manufacturing downtime by doing predictive maintenance on their equipment. They were one of the early adopters of Monotron. So very fun to be working with a nice, innovative company and creative company like Fender. So let's talk about what's happening with cameras. There are cameras everywhere, just like I'm on right now. Uh, and so uh, more and more customers want to write applications that interact with video and video stream. So we built Kinesis Video a few years ago. There are millions of cameras on Kinesis Video already, and those are streaming in data all the time. Now, if you were to write an application from scratch to build your own camera system and camera management system and, and streaming management system, it's hundreds of thousands of lines of code. Kinesis Video lets you do it in five lines of code. And it not only just works with video, it works with radar and LIDAR and other things like that, any time series frame data. And so you'll see how we use this later on robotics and other areas. So you can set your cameras up quickly, get them streaming into the cloud. And more and more customers are using cheap and expensive cameras as very robust IoT devices. And so we'll talk about how they do that. But one great customer is, of course, Wise. So Wise is able to deploy these cameras. I have these in my house, as a matter of fact. They're very exciting little cameras, very inexpensive, very capable. In fact, a number of our industrial customers are starting to deploy these in their factory settings because they're so inexpensive and they can really deploy a lot of them out there.
But by using Kinesis Video, they reduced their development time for doing streaming edge video systems by 50% and let them get out a lot cheaper and a lot faster out there. And so more and more security cameras are getting integrated with Kinesis Video. In fact, we converted all of our data centers over to Kinesis Video for all our security systems. They're saving huge amounts of money and really increasing the robust capabilities of it. But the exciting thing to me is how you can use a camera uh, as part of a networked environment uh, on site. So introducing Lookout for Vision. So here you can stream your video in to the cloud and automatically detect things. You can detect defects, you can detect numbers of people, places, you can detect if someone's not wearing PPE, for example, or something like that in, in, in today's world. You can detect when crowds are building up, you can detect smoke, you can detect fire, you can detect all sorts of things now with a simple camera. Uh, so that camera becomes a multifunction sensor device, and then you can click a button and turn the streaming on and see what's really going on. That's one thing that's so cool about combining uh, Lookout for Vision uh, with uh, Kinesis Video. Uh, of course, again, uh, uh, often people will run into the challenge where they can't stream all that data back. A lot of our customers can, but some of them can't. So for that, we made Panorama. A nice little appliance you can drop in place. It's got GPUs and everything in it. You can connect it to your existing cameras and do everything I just talked about, except do it locally. Uh, so you don't need to stream all that back to get the functionality. And again, for both of these, you don't have to be a vision ML expert. Uh, you can use our expertise and what we've learned and take advantage of that right here on this kit. So that's something to try out, a really cool little device there. Of course, if you got a smart camera, you can run it as an SDK, the same stack on your camera. And a lot of the new cameras today have a lot of local processing power. And so this allows you to push that to the camera without having a separate device and then stream in as needed on Kinesis Video. So, so for example, if you had a camera pointed at a parking lot in the middle of the night, it's empty. The machine learning model says there's no reason to stream this up, but as soon as a car drives through, it can stream it up. Or you can even look for specific vehicles, which is pretty exciting, or specific types of vehicles. You can, you can read license plates, all sorts of interesting things by turning that camera into a robust sensor. We'll see more about that later with some of our demos. Cargill is a great example of this, uh, where they have all these different size uh, trucks entering their grain facility, and they can look at the cameras using the machine learning model and route the truck to the right bay based on its size. And that's just a perfect example. There's a whole list of them out on our website you can take a look at, but Cargill is a great one to take a look at. So let's talk about networked environments and sites and what we can do there when we pull all of this together at a site. So SiteWise uh, is a great product to allow you to get visibility and understand what's happening to the site. You can have hundreds of thousands of IoT sensors streaming in data continuously at a site, and you want to make sense of it. That's what SiteWise is all about. You can create dashboards, set alarms, you can do analytics of the data store over time, and you can create models and data structures for how your equipment and assets interact with each other to meet sort of your key business requirements. A lot of our customers said to us, well, you know, it's great to have all that stuff streaming into the cloud, but my, my systems have to run, uh, and my manufacturing floor has to run 24 seven, even if the network goes down. Um, so, uh, and other customers said, well, geez, I've got to run very low latency and I've got to make dashboard decisions instantaneously. So I need SiteWise to run on site. So welcome to SiteWise Edge. So SiteWise Edge is everything you love about SiteWise and all of the capabilities of SiteWise push to the edge. So you can run it on common third-party gateways as a virtual machine. And of course, on AWS Outposts, which we'll talk about, and our Snowball products as well, right there on site. And it allows you to do everything you can do in the cloud just on site. Uh, and of course, it connects into the cloud so you can build your models and all your information in the cloud, push it to the edge or make changes at the edge and push it back up to the cloud. So uh, check out SiteWise Edge, it's a, a great new product. 
And of course, Volkswagen Group's a great example of a, a customer partner where we're building things together and doing large scale industrial automation. I mentioned Siemens earlier. They're one of the partners here working with Volkswagen as well. Uh, and their goal is to do shop floor automation and reduce their costs by about 30% improved productivity across the board. And SiteWise is a core piece of that along with IoT and IoT Core and uh, all of the things we're talking about at the edge today. Volkswagen is a great example of pulling all that together. So most sites these days have automation. So uh, we developed a RoboMaker and released it to allow you to very quickly design and develop robotics and robotic systems, uh, run simulations in 3D environments, as you can see there in the center, and also deploy and manage fleets of robotics on site. And of course, the nice thing about RoboMaker, everything we've talked about is just built in. It uses green grass. It's got all your machine learning built in. It's got all your vision and radar and LIDAR systems built in. It's got a full development environment, a full deployment environment. And the cool thing is you can create all these 3D worlds and test your robot out in the 3D worlds before even testing them in the real world. You can do massive scale simulation in parallel. Uh, you can turn years into seconds uh, uh, and do huge amounts of data processing uh, and simulation in the cloud. Uh, and then after your robot is trained and you're happy with it, you can push it down uh, uh, onto the fleets of robots and deploy a little bit at a time and roll back if there's any issues. And you can access everything in CloudWatch and see the alarms and those kinds of things. So it gives you a lot of control and it's a core piece. We took everything we've learned from our seven robotics teams at Amazon and stuck it into RoboMaker so you can use it too and develop things faster. So a great example of this is Milivus. Uh, they're a really smart and fun robotics company. You should check them out if you haven't. They make a whole series of robots and they integrate with RoboMaker and it really allows them to accelerate their development. And this was pretty important in this time of COVID and other things like that. This is a UV sterilization robot for hospitals. And you might have seen in the previous slide, that was actually a simulation of a hospital. And they're able to simulate this for a number of interesting training. First of all, they have to, you know, not turn the, the uh, UV light on when people are around and avoid obstacles and they're always changing the hospital. Second of all, they have to make sure they get full coverage. Uh, and they're able to do all that in the RoboMaker simulation world, push it to the edge and do fleet management there. So uh, it's a great example of a solution along with, there's lots of other companies from the, the NASA Rover to uh, uh, iRobot running on RoboMaker. So it's, it's worth understanding if you have any kind of robotics and automation out there, you can really speed things up with that. Of course, you know, a lot of folks say, well, I kind of know where all my stuff is when it's out there at the edge. So, you know, we've got to be able to map it and track it and plan it and handle all the assets. So announcing today, AWS Location Services, which is our mapping system that does uh, full mapping capabilities, uh, everything you would expect from a mapping service. You can define places, you can do tracking of assets, you can do geofencing. So you can geofence an area and, and know if an asset leaves a geofence. Uh, you can do routing. Uh, and one of the cool things is it's integrated with all of AWS services and expect even more integration where you'll be able to map your snow cones and your outposts and all these other things and where your drones and your robots are. So look for more there. And of course, a lot of the mapping data is provided to us uh, with our partners here in Esri working together along with others and satellite providers and things like that. Very easy to access, very low cost. A built in privacy and security and fully integrated with AWS to drop maps right into your application or any geospatial service right into your app. So I'm pretty excited about that and how it will integrate with this edge world uh, and AWS as a whole. So now let's talk about the changes that are happening with 5G and 5G hubs out there. As you know, we launched Wavelength some time ago. It gives you the ability to deploy your applications. Remember like Lambda functions and containers, and but even EC2 instances in this case and others using CloudFormation templates into local 5G hubs that are run by different telcos that are our partners. It gives you very low latency access to machine learning models, other things like that, that, that are concurrent in the cloud along with GPU processing. You can run gaming systems and other things to mobile devices from there. It gives you a consistent development environment just like you had in the cloud. In fact, it is the cloud at the edge, if you like. Same, you know, overall AWS benefits and a nice broad coverage as 5G rolls out. And one of the big changes with 5G is super low latency in addition to better bandwidth. And so you can start moving things into these hubs you never thought of before. 
And a great example of that is what our partner Tata is doing in industrial IoT, which is the ability to do machine learning and other things in a 5G hub that's nearby and deliver it because of the low latency. And that's pretty important too when you start looking at virtual reality. If you don't have a low enough latency between the process of the image and the headset, people can start to get a little bit dizzy. I've seen that myself. So it's pretty important in robotics as well. If you don't have an, a low enough latency between the compute uh, and the action of the robotics, uh, things can get out of sync. So uh, uh, it's pretty amazing what we're gonna be able to do with 5G and wavelength in the future. Uh, and again, these are just, we'll talk a little bit about outposts. These are outposts running in these sites uh, with our customers. So let's talk about the rugged edge. Coming from my work in oil and gas and automotive and in the defense industry, uh, the rugged edge is pretty important to me because it's where the cloud and a lot of the stuff really happens. And the rugged edge has some challenges with it, right? It's got intermittent network connectivity. It's rugged. Uh, and so we had to build devices to be able to what first transport data from the edge into the cloud. A lot of high quality data is collected at the edge, uh, like movie uh, industry is recording films at the edge seismic vessels collecting data, drones collecting data, you know, satellite interaction systems, ships, other things like that. So the snow products were originally built for data transport, but that was a long time ago. You know, many years ago, we converted them to do edge processing as well and pushed the cloud to them. So for example, I have here uh, a snow cone. Uh, this is the Snowball's smaller brother, if you like. Uh, ruggedized, it's got EC2 instances on it. It's got storage, it's got built-in logistics with the each label. Only cost six bucks to use. Uh, it's got connectivity on the front along with Wi-Fi. Uh, and Snowball's even bigger. It's got 5,300 GPUs, 100 terabytes of storage, 100 gig networking. Ruggedized, it can be airdropped, uh, believe it or not, with a parachute. It can survive uh, the military tests for the barge tests and things like that. Uh, and it gives a lot of local processing. And some great examples you can see here, they're rack mountable and you can see them there. One rack of Snowball Edges has 4,300 GPUs and 415 uh, x86, 412 x86 cores and 800 gig networking, which is pretty amazing for, for that rack. And those just mount in standard racks, uh, but the devices can be used individually. They can operate in deserts and on ships and all sorts of places. And of course the snow cone can be used for a lot of different types of operations. And you can you know, deploy EC2 instances of this. It's got S3 on it. They can be clustered up to about you know, one and a half petabytes or so. And people can do a lot of the processing locally in these rugged environments at the edge. You can get them as reserve instance for one to three years. Um, and so they can really be out there for a long time, but they can also process and ship the data. So you can process, react locally and ship the bulk data back. And a lot of customers do that as well. Here's a great example of Novetta. So they build these command and control systems for disaster recover, military and others. And you can see the snowball edges right there. They can get set up in just a few hours. And you can see on the lower left hand side, the high resolution screen that's being delivered off of the GPUs on that snowball. It's another great place to run machine learning models. And for example, this has the IoT hub in it and the ability to deploy ML on it and green grass, right? So a lot of the stuff we talked about all pushes down to this edge. So let's talk a little bit about the on-premise environment. And a lot of customers said to us, hey, I like those snowballs. I like racks of snowballs, but really what I'd like is to have something in my data center that's more dense uh, and I don't need it to be ruggedized in my data center. Uh, and so uh, we developed Outpost. So Outpost allows you through our Nitro product to extend AWS locally into your data center. So it extends from an availability zone into your data center. It's much more dense than a snowball rack. You can't drop it out of an airplane like a snowball rack or dump water on it, but it gives you this enterprise class compute capabilities right there on the edge. And that allows you to do things again, like your robotics and manufacturing application is the edge. Sometimes you have the need to do high performance computing right next to where the data is stored on the edge. You can run S3 on it. You can push a lot of things to the edge and all of it seamlessly works with AWS at the back end. And it's of course patched and managed by us as well. But a lot of customers said to us, hey, you know, I don't need something that big for my field sites. I like the snowball, uh, but I want something that mounts in a rack uh, and I don't need the ruggedization. So uh, introducing now the uh, smaller versions of the Outposts, a 1U and 2U version of Outpost, 
Again, all of the same stuff you love about Outpost and all of the same consistent APIs that you can push to the edge just in a smaller form factor to deploy in more locations. So, so to check that out, pretty excited about Outpost and what it can do and how it fits into this overall portfolio. But also a lot of our customers, what they really need at the edge, so for example, in field offices where they're sharing data or in the movie industry where they're sharing a video with each other, is something like Storage Gateway. So Storage Gateway allows you to back up from the edge, allows you to, to have what we call infinite local storage. So you can have your storage device locally, it's backed up by the cloud and it can scale infinitely back on the cloud and gives you that very low latency local access. You can set it up as HA and other things like that locally as well. So it's also a great product that connects in and works with all these other products we've been talking about. And Morningstar is a great example of that. Uh, Morningstar runs outposts on premise and it gives them sort of this truly hybrid environment where they're seamlessly operating on premise and in the cloud. So it's a great example of an early outpost customer, but there's a whole lot of them deploying now and examples, for example, in, at Volkswagen and others in their on-site manufacturing there where they got to have that low latency processing. So let's talk about now the metro centers and local zones and what they can provide to you as part of this end-to-end -end architecture we've been covering here. So local zones are an extension of an AWS availability zone and region locally, like in the LA area. And what it provides to you is, again, close by you, speed of light, low latency, uh, local processing, uh, local storage, local GPUs and all those kinds of things. And it connects back to the main region. So it has sort of the same sort of management and capabilities of the main region and allows you to have the AWS services that you're familiar with right there close to you in a metro area. And so you would use this, unlike say an outpost or a snowball that are single tenant, in other words, they're just for you, uh, you would use this uh, as a multi-tenant scalable environment, just like the cloud, and you would connect to it just like you were connecting to uh, the main region. Uh, it just would be running locally with lower latency. So for things like stock exchanges, for video editing and video desktops, high resolution desktops, gaming, all those kinds of things, local zone, a great solution for you to be able to deploy in. So that's what it's all about. Uh, if we take a look here, uh, what we're talking about is this centralized control with decentralized execution. You can use CloudFormation to deploy across most of these environments. CloudFormation, of course, also deploys outside of AWS if you like it to. You can use CloudWatch to monitor it. Uh, you can use Config to edit it. You can use the IoT for your IoT devices, the IoT fleet management systems to deploy and the RoboMaker fleet management systems. Uh, you can deploy and manage machine learning models on your robots, on your devices. You can write a Lambda function or a container and run it on a device run it in the cloud, run it on a wavelength, run it on a snowball, run it on an outpost, uh, or run it in a local zone or run it in a region. All of it is managed with AWS security. And remember, we're the only cloud that's been certified since 2014 for TSSCI processing, uh, which is the highest level of certification, what's called ATL level six. And we have more compliance regimes that we meet than any other cloud provider. So we've had a lot of experience doing this very securely. And security is always our job one. And we've got things like device defenders and a whole bunch of other products I didn't talk about that are 100% focused on security in this space. And so that's really, really important as well. Another thing to take into account that I don't think other cloud providers can claim is we have to do all this for ourselves. We're very familiar with the edge. Uh, we run massive infrastructures at Amazon. And the cool thing is when you're using our products and services in the edge and at the cloud, you get to take advantage of and leverage all of our years of experience that we've been doing this. So we run 175 fulfillment centers out there today and 40 sorting centers. We have 50 of them are robotic, which I'm gonna show you one here in a second. Over 250,000 robots out there, but we manage hundreds of millions of Alexa devices with our IoT systems and hundreds of millions more of our customer devices today. All that data streams in through IoT and through things like Kinesis. We do about 8.8 .8 trillion records per day coming in. It's, it's really amazing. Uh, uh, what we're doing across this area. Uh, so let me show you exa an example of what uh, uh, robotic systems look like at Amazon. 
So here you can see one of our uh, fully automated fulfillment centers. Basically, you've got these racks and the robots are running underneath the racks. You can't see them, but you can see them here. They have the ability to freely move under the racks and pick which racks they choose and then bring the racks up and bring them to the pickers. Now, if you watch here, they're all working in a swarm. They're working together. And you can see them just stop just in time and not hit each other, which is really amazing as they coordinate their operations here. And of course, this design came from simulating over and over again, kind of like we do in RoboMaker, all the different types of robots working together. And you can see some of them are moving pretty quickly here and they're just missing each other. Uh, so this coordination occurs across all of these robots working here. And you can see product comes in one side, gets stored in these racks, and then gets put out on the other side to the pickers. Another thing that's counterintuitive is the more random the products are, the faster we can move because you can do more things in parallel. If they were all, for example, to do a decimal system, they would line up behind each other serially and they'd be very slow. Uh, our goal here from an SLA perspective is from the time you click buy on our website, uh, it's in a box in a truck in 20 minutes. Uh, and you can't do that without automation. And so we took what we learned here uh, and integrated into RoboMaker so you can do this too. Uh, it leverages our IoT systems. It leverages our edge processing. Uh, virtually everything we've talked about in this presentation is this is one area where you get the advantage of us having to do it for ourselves. Uh, and the security, the performance, the scalability, all of that is built into the products that you can use immediately out of the box on AWS. So let me pull it all together with another one of our customers. Let me talk a little bit about Woodside. So they're a really innovative customer down in Australia. I love working with them. They're very lean forward. They've taken all of their LNG plants and turned them into digital twins using 3D imaging systems, uh, our IoT systems, machine learning. They are using RoboMaker and robotics uh, and experimenting with robots turning knobs and things like that and doing inspections. They've taken that idea of real-time video, putting cheap cameras everywhere and turning them into sensors. And they're saving a lot of money by doing predictive maintenance. They can also run simulations on their plants as well. So what you're about to see here uh, is first a LiDAR version of the plant that they collected uh, using you know, 3D pho photogrammetry, and then they overlay that with uh, a CAD CAM system. And this is how they manage their plants. Uh, so let's take a look at it right now. So what you're seeing here uh, as you fly in is the LiDAR view of the plant in 3D. And on the lower right-hand side, you're seeing RoboMaker making its rounds. That's the RoboMaker console that just popped up. As you fly in here, you'll see uh, in real time the IoT data pumping up uh, uh, for these uh, pumps and compressors. Uh, and if you take a look closely here, you'll see when they switch to the CAD CAM view, it's slightly different, which is why they do the regular updates of the LiDAR. But in the CAD CAM view, they overlay the real-time video. So the operator can see the real-time video uh, of what's actually going on. So if they see an alarm or something like that, they can zoom in and see in the real world what's going on. Uh, but as I mentioned before, they're taking also that camera and converting, using machine learning, the, the oil level there into uh, an 86% uh, there. They also have uh, streaming in the acoustic data there you can see also, and they can zoom in on the individual compressor. So once the operator's happy with that, and you can see the robot is inspecting that pipe there in the center, uh, there's a valve that's turned over here. Uh, uh, as part of the automated system. And so they're gonna send the robot over with its infrared camera to take a look at the fans and make sure heat is being properly dissipated. And you can see the valve turned 11 minutes ago there. And there's the fans with the infrared camera on the robot as it continues its inspection. Uh, and of course the robot can navigate itself because it's got all of those features I talked about uh, before in RoboMaker for them. And you can see its LiDAR view down there. And now the operators switch back to their LiDAR view. They're gonna fly over as part of their inspection, take a look at these other compressors. Those are people who didn't stand still long enough to be scanned. And the same thing is gonna happen here as they come in and get close to these uh, uh, compressors, the real-time data is gonna pop up so the uh, operator can see it and manage it. Uh, and take action if necessary. And now he's hooking into the camera for that compressor and you can see it's converted the oil level on this vial uh, to 87%. And the robot continues down there, its inspection of the plant. But this is a great example 
of sort of pulling it all together. Uh, you've got edge processing, you've got uh, uh, Kinesis video doing streaming, you've got LiDAR collection, uh, you've got uh, RoboMaker doing the robotics and the inspections, you've got uh, a machine learning, uh, both doing predictive maintenance and converting the cameras into data, if you like. Uh, you've got uh, edge processing uh, of all different types. They're also a big Snowball user as well. Um, uh, you've got the 3D visualization. You've got uh, the ability of SiteWise to have the dashboards in place to see what's going on in the plant. Um, uh, and you've got the real-time alarming and things like that going on also uh, that you can operate. And of course, CloudWatch also works here uh, as well uh, on RoboMaker and things like that. So having it all together here, it really paints the picture uh, of how the edge can work for you and your business. So I think what you've seen here today is the number of edge specific capabilities we deploy at AWS, how we've learned from what we've done running a massive logistics, robotics, autonomous environment and IoT environment at Amazon. And we've taken all that learning and rolled it into the edge. In addition to that, we've taken the learning of millions of customers uh, and the request from millions of customers uh, for things like snowballs and outposts and IoT and green grass and all those other things uh, and evolved our systems to meet those needs along with our partners like Siemens and Volkswagen and others uh, uh, that are doing amazing innovation with us at Amazon. Uh, we really do have a robust end-to-end -end portfolio uh, where you can connect, develop, deploy, secure, manage your entire environment end-to-end. -end. You can write the same code and the same APIs from the very edge all the way back to the cloud. And we have more features here than any other cloud provider today. We continue to evolve the products to make your edge experience the best in the world. And I only touch the surface. Uh, there's a lot more going on out there. So I encourage you, if you want to do deeper dives in any of these areas, to take a look. For example, doing a deeper dive on Outpost or a deeper dive on Snow Cone and Snowball or a deeper dive on Robotics and Wavelength. There's a lot more. And of course, IoT is an important one as well. So make sure you, you do that IoT session if you're interested in this space as well. Uh, Dirk does an amazing job with a lot of great customer examples of how they're using things there. And also, you know, you could check out the management and governance slides as well, because we talk about pushing this to the edge as well and how CloudFormation and CloudWatch and config and others can work at the edge as well as in the cloud and in hybrid environments. So uh, thank you for taking the time today uh, and, and uh, attending some of these uh, AWS uh, uh, reInvent sessions. Uh, I'm really excited to see what you guys do at the edge.